This week, we're gonna show you how to add lightning and smoke to your photos and give you advice on buying your first digital SLR. All right, guys, welcome to our Q&A. Each week, we're answering new questions from the audience. So you got something you wanna know? Just leave it in a comment right down below. And don't forget, every person whose question we answer is gonna win a free month of Florin Pro. Let's get into the questions. Would you please talk more about the pen tool? I'm new to Photoshop and I don't know how to thank you for your great content and I really hope to be picked up because that definitely improved my skills. And congratulations for 1 million minutes on the website. So here's the deal with the pen tool. It's a way for you to make any shape that you want in Photoshop and you can make extremely accurate selections out of these shapes. And the most common uses for the pen tool in Photoshop are actually cutting people or objects out of their background. The deal is you trace the person or object and then you turn that into a selection load that selection as a layer mask, and poof, they're cut out of the background. Now, once you cut an object out of its background, you can put in a new background and make any image you want. So keep in mind when using a pen tool, you wanna to look for simple curves. Click at the beginning of a simple curve and the end of a simple curve, and click and drag to make that curve. And whenever you need to change direction, hold Alt or Option and click on your control point, you can change directions. So a simple curve is like a C, and a complex curve is like an S. It changes directions twice. Hello. Hello, John Bob. I'm looking to buy my first digital SLR. Can you give me advice? Should I go Canon or Nikon? I'd really like to see your opinion on this topic. So here's the nuts and bolts of it. Whether you're shooting with a Canon or a Nikon or Olympus or a Fuji or a Sony, it really does not matter. Pretty much all camera manufacturers are even across the board when you compare price points. So if you're looking at a $300 Canon versus a $5,000 Nikon, obviously that Nikon is going to be better. But if you're comparing cameras that are alike on the same plane, which it's usually based on price point, they're gonna be really similar. Cameras these days are really good. I mean, most of the photos I take these days are with my iPhone and a lot of them are totally good. So when it comes to choosing the camera, I wouldn't choose it based on all these specs and megapixels and whatnot. Rent a couple and feel them in your hand and see, do you actually like this thing? Do you like the way it feels and looks and do you like how it operates in your hand? Every camera is gonna feel a little bit different to you and you're gonna be carrying this thing around. So choose something that actually makes sense to you and something that you enjoy bringing with you. In Photography 101, we shot portraits from eight different camera types, including an iPhone, a Canon G11 point and shoot, we shot with an A7R2 mirrorless camera, an entry level digital SLR, a pro level digital SLR, and even a $50,000 medium format camera. And you know what? The images were totally all usable. Did the ones from the 5D Mark III look better than the ones from the iPhone? Yes. Was it that big of a difference? Not really. And different cameras are gonna help you out in different situations. When it comes to choosing your camera, choose something that you're going to like and bring with you. And after all, camera is a very small part of what makes images great. How do I spend my days without watching your channel? Cry? Probably just re-watching this channel. Just continue watching it. Get your friends to watch this channel and then have them tell you about it. I would recommend a book club, but instead of the book club, you just have this channel as the teaching point and then you just talk about this channel. I wanna simulate movement by adding appropriate blur. I've looked at motion blur, but it adds blur to both front and back of the moving object. I'm wanting more control over the path of blur and transparency of the blur. So when you're creating motion blur, if you want a little bit more control, basically the first thing you wanna do is cut your subject out of the background. And you can do this with the magic wand tool. You really can be pretty quick here. Even the last tool is going to totally work. Now, after you cut your subject out, go ahead and duplicate them to a new layer and then go ahead and add your blur to this new layer. You can use a layer mask to hide either the front or the back of the blur, making them look like they're blurring left or the blurring right. And you can change your transparency in your layer opacity. This should give you enough freedom to play around with your blur and give you exactly what you need. How do you feel about the ethical implications of editing and manipulating a photo? This is a tricky question because honestly, uh, pretty much every photo that I see these days has been ed edited or manipulated in some way. I mean, literally every single picture, it's either color corrected a little bit, it's just some exposures going on. And if it's like for a commercial use or in a magazine, you can bet there's been probably at least 30 minutes of Photoshop gone into that image. So we living in a world where like the raw unedited image is pretty much something that you never see. And sometimes you do see it and it's like celebrated. There have been like campaigns where like, you know, certain celebrities have been like no makeup and things like that or no retouching. And that gets more attention sometimes than the retouched images. So that's how unfamiliar unedited images have actually become. So how do I feel about all that? 
Boy, I don't know, man. I mean, I, on one hand, I really love Photoshop. I think it's a heck of a lot of fun and I think you can do really interesting things in it. I think that there's definitely a line there. If you are gonna be editing, let's say a person in a photo, I would definitely talk with that person and make sure that anything that you're gonna be doing to that photo is okay with them and okay with anyone who sees that photo as well. For me, editing a photo has to do with actually creating more of an impact in that photo. So I spend a lot of time removing distractions and getting rid of anything that like doesn't help out the central message of that photo. It's not about manipulating a person's face or body and making them look like someone else. It's about how do I bring this photo to its maximum potential. If you're on that spectrum, then I think you're always gonna be okay. Keep people's faces how they are. You're all beautiful. Can you make a tutorial on how to take silhouettes indoors? Of course I can show you how to create a silhouette indoors. Honestly, all you need to do is turn off the lights in front of you. Let me just turn these off. Then you need to make more light behind you, which we just did. Then you just need to adjust your camera settings to where you're good to go. And then it looks like, check it out. I don't know who shot that man. It was a stranger. Arnold Palmer was the one who taught me how to play golf. Now we just made a silhouette. Pretty easy. When will there be another Flurn photo contest? Thanks for awesome Photoshop tutorials. I'm glad you asked. We just brought our Instagram contest back. Just follow Flurn on Instagram and you can submit your images. Just give them the hashtag Flurn contest and the theme for that week. For instance, this week is Flurn color. Every week we're gonna announce a new theme and each person chosen wins a free month of Flurn Pro. How do I create lightning or smoke from scratch in Photoshop? Honestly, the easiest way to create lightning in Photoshop is to find an image that actually has lightning in it already and then change the blending mode from normal down to screen. It's gonna get rid of the black in the background and just leave you with your lightning. And in terms of creating smoke, I actually created a custom brush in Photoshop that just makes smoke. So you can just follow the link on your screen right now and download it for free. Easy. All right, guys, last question. So you've got all these tutorials and photography as a whole and how to do certain things in Photoshop and Lightroom. So now that our photography is getting better, how do we go about making money off of what we love doing? Ah, the perfect question. How do we make money out of our hobbies? So there really isn't one way that people go about becoming a photographer. In fact, every photographer you ask is gonna have a different answer on how they get started and how they're probably making money currently. The one thing that I started with is just taking pictures of like the things that I enjoyed. Family and friends saw, like, saw some of those pictures and said, hey, that looks really cool. I'm gonna hire you to take some pictures. Regular people just pretty much want regular pictures taken. They want pictures of their family, their kids, maybe for an event, maybe for a Christmas card, maybe for a wedding or a, you know, engagement, things like that. That's what normal people want. And that's where most people are gonna get their start. While doing that stuff, I would highly recommend working on your own portfolio, shooting the stuff that you want to shoot. Not necessarily the stuff that you think is gonna get you paid, but the stuff that you are extremely passionate about. Then while you build up your own personal portfolio, just doing your own personal work, you can look for clients who may want exactly what you want to shoot. So me personally, I love conceptual work. I love out there, like really cool, creative, colorful, like big stuff. And and that means that I'm gonna be looking for clients who are interested in that same thing. Also, it's important to note that tons of different industries need photographers from fashion to food to advertising to film photographers. So you can combine your passion of industry with your passion of photography and that can help you start making money. And the last thing to remember is photography is a service-based business. So connect with people and find out what they want and do your best to deliver it. All right guys, that's it for this week. And don't forget, if you got a question, you can submit it right down below in a comment. Each week we're gonna scoop up all the best questions and answer them and you're gonna win a free Flurn Pro subscription for a month. Thanks so much guys, I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone.